yeah anyway so i will move to you back to you uh just to go back to the question what activities have you been part of as a south to south exchange participant i know there's been a lot but if you could just give us you know a small breakdown of what you've been part of um i've been part of the budget advocacy sessions where we facilitated um like budget advocacy stuff like how the Kenyan youth can actually advocate for their needs during the budget making process mm-hmm. and also I've been heavily engaged in the youth engagement exercise mm-hmm. that involved like where we went to counties like Machakos to collect data and meet youth where they operate and also like I've been involved in the feminist hangout which was a conversation an interesting conversation uh, do you want to share a bit on it if we still have time you could maybe give us a small one minute what was the feminist hangout on so the feminist hangout involved women young urban women and refugee women in Kamkunji if I've pronounced that right you actually got it right yeah so they were just talking about the issue of public sef- of public services and how they if they are being responsive to their needs and if they are gender sensitive and all that mm-hmm. so one of the things they talked about was femicide where they said that some of the things that facilitate femicide is that um the police desk like the gender desk at the police station mm-hmm. has police officers that are gender ignorant so they said yeah. and instead of helping the women and maybe rescuing them from abusive marriages abusive relationships they bring them yeah i think that is actually a thing with police stations in kenya especially when reporting maybe abuse or something that happened to you that people will ask you oh how 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 are you dressed or um, look at how you're dressed or were you drunk or you're actually drunk so are you sure what you're saying is true so that's definitely an experience that a lot of Kenyan women could share or would share so but yes um thank you for that are there any other uh, activities that you've done that could be mem- or could be or are memorable to you Mm. I think the people's dialogue festival is very memorable. <laughs> uh-huh. It was a chance to sell out the organization to to youth, to members of the society that were interested. Mm-hmm. And it was at that particular time that you know had a time to reflect like what does with the life do? How do I best present this to people so that they understand what the life does? and meeting a lot of people from diverse organizations it was actually very nice and refreshing okay yes i actually did see you in the field at some point when i came and you were very busy for a while but yes so just to move on from that you given this opportunity you have managed to travel far and wide in kenya <laughs> so what would you say is your favorite county or you know city so far my favorite county is muranga oh, wow why <laughs> why muranga muranga is very scenic and very beautiful because when you're traveling up and down the hills and then you'll see like the rivers meandering like throughout the hills and all that it was very nice and it had like nice air nice environment I think I'm getting a little hint of art girl. I mean you like goats, you like farming, you're like it had a silly crude. Well, I'm honestly impressed. I did not think you would say Muranga. So props to Muranga people. Aha. Uh-huh. So uh next thing. Um uh, what was your most memorable or fun experience? You've been at Utah Life Kenya for about 4 months, 5 months, Billy. I'm not even sure. 4 to 5. And um what would you say was your most memorable experience? Um yeah so I'll start the memorable experience as in just like Kenya the first one I'll repeat it again <laughs> <laughs> the Mombasa visit. The Mombasa visit. <laughs> yeah yeah that was very memorable. And um you know there are some things that we take lightly 
like I've mentioned again before, uh, the catching flies thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, when you get to an extent of actually taking a nap eh, on a flight, <laughs> eh, you'll be like, ah, okay, you know, I'm used to this. <laughs> this is now my thing. <laughs> Yeah, so it was it was uh, some of those things where you'd be like, okay, um, this is fun. This is not like an everyday life that you do, or like you know, yeah. everyday things that you do back home. Um, and also, I'm just a person who likes traveling, so also the traveling was also like uh, very nice, and I enjoyed. And here at, at Youth Alive, every day is a memorable and fun day because the team made us feel like home and um, it's actually hard to pick out like one specific day where you'd be like you know yeah this day at work was like a highlight yes of course you have those one too like the pot like uh, the pot like day yeah, like you know it was fun and nice yeah. but again there are a lot of uh, things that we did here so it was just um, it was just nice and um, each day uh, brought uh, like unique unique experiences and joy and just made this day awesome yeah. In simple terms, that we just say, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, on to you, Yeo. Yeah, what uh, could be the most, or what has been the most memorable or fun experience you've had at Youth Alive and just in Kenya in general? Um, the most memorable and fun experience I've had at Youth Alive, that's actually a very difficult question because to pick one from all the fun experiences. <laughs> difficult but I can say um, the most memorable experience and fun experience mm-hmm. was when we listened to you had to cook <laughs> yes. our logo dishes um, I think it was very fun because honestly I didn't see myself cooking that dish <laughs> Well, it turned out amazing. The feedback from everyone was, yeah. Uh-huh. And just to see how, and see how Youth Alive accommodates diversity, where <laughs> every every culture, every aspect of life is welcome, especially among like, the staff members and all that. So I think it was very memorable. And the most memorable experience in Kenya. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got lost in town. <laughs> oh wow! Is that uh, what happened? Um, I was following Google Maps, and I think <laughs> I went off track, and I was just wondering about in town. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you find your way back? Also, considering you were using your phone out in the open in CBD, how did it? <laughs> That was one of, you see, after I figured out where I was supposed to go, I kept my phone in my bag. Ah, okay. And then I was like, I'm going to follow through. And then I lost track of where I was going because I couldn't use my phone out in the open. Yeah. And then I just had to crash my phone close to myself and just check where the National Archives is. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, hint is maybe when you come to Nairobi next time, look for, I think there are three places that are marks, archives. We have, um, no, it's not the Hilton, there's KICC, it's shipped very, and, and Kencom. Those are once you could stand there and tell someone I'm lost, but I'm at Kencom or I'm at archives or I'm at um, KICC, come and get me. But I'm sorry for that experience that you had. And maybe to just um, tell people, Yo and Billy cooked for us. I think it was two days ago. We wanted to try their food because they've been raving about sadza and um, this vegetable dish that you made that had, I think, groundnut powder. And it's definitely lived up to the standards. Do you want to tell us a bit about that vegetable? I, I don't remember the name. Please remember me the name. Oh, it was Nkwani Odendera. Hey! Nkwani. Oh, sorry, what? Nkwani Odendera. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> you can repeat that. Okay, we will take lessons at the back. Meet me at the back. <laughs> so, um, 
Um, on to Billy again. Do you have any feedback on the program? Just it could be anything positive you particularly enjoyed, or just something that could help improve uh, this experience for future participants. Because we have people coming in, and we always want to hear your feedback and see how can we change things to make it more comfortable for even the next people. So. Okay. Yeah. So before I answer that, mm -hmm. uh, just like um, just pitching to what Yebo was saying. You know, Google Maps sometimes it can throw you places. <laughs> <laughs> Have you also got it? <laughs> You'll be like, um, you go this direction and it's telling you to head this direction, and you are realizing, like, no, I want to go to this shop. <laughs> and it's actually like the other side. Google Maps is something else. And again, like what you were saying, National Archives, like when I was uh, going through uh, Facebook, I actually bumped into a video mm -hmm. which was like, Whenever you get lost in Nairobi, just find yourself back to National Archives yes. and you'll be good. <laughs> yeah, so I'm answering the question, um, I think we, we shared uh, this, uh, this suggestion, this feedback. Uh, so it was uh, to allocate a small budget, you know, to show participants around, um, visit uh, different sites, uh, places that is uh, during the first week or first weeks or probably the first month of arrival. So, you know, we, we believe that uh, this will help new participants to, to our climate and more quickly like enrich themselves with the environment, the places, and also the cultural experiences. And um, yeah, overall, like, um, the program was, was well organized and um, I particularly enjoyed like, uh, the supportive and welcome environment uh, provided by the Youth Alive uh, Kenya team and also our coordinators, you know, they're taking care of us and taking care of everything in a very good way. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with the one for just a bit of sightseeing to get, you know, acquainted with Kenya and Nairobi City. So, yeah, that's definitely some feedback that will be taken. So, Yeo, do you have any feedback on the program? It could also be positive or it could be something that could help improve this experience for future participants. So, yes. Um, positive feedback. I think it's very amazing how Youth Alive assimilates the participants and do its everyday working. Mm -hmm. For instance, when you first when I first came to Kenya, one of the fears I had was that I wouldn't be as involved. Mm -hmm. And as someone who does not like just sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> I felt anxious, I was like, what if I go there and I'm just like an office chair or some office furniture and I don't, I'm not really engaged in any sort of way. But then when I came here, one of the, one of the amazing things was that without even seeing it, like this, the transition to actually being a part of it, life was so seamless. Mm -hmm. And I was heavily engaged and I think so was believe. <laughs> <laughs> Your boss is watching. I'm watching. I'm listening. <laughs> okay. So I think back to you. Um, so just a follow-up question. Um, there, there's definitely people who are going to be listening to this podcast because they are coming in next or there are people who are listening to this podcast because they have aspirations to be part of this program. So what are some of the tips or advice you would give them um, as they try to get into this program, basically. So generally, my my advice, I think, will be focusing on those who who, who come across um, the call for the for the exchange program. Um, all I can say is, please apply. You know, um, I was one of those people who be like, ah, I don't think I will succeed mm -hmm. in this thing. Yeah, but um, I applied and I succeeded. So. Um, the best thing to do is to just apply. You know, you never know what will happen. You might be the, the next uh, exchange participant and uh, you know, experiencing this good environment in this good country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my word is just apply and just do your best when you're applying. Put your all. Mm -hmm. um, you will definitely get the chance to be uh, an exchange participant. Really with the motivation. So, um, back to you. What is if, if there's someone who aspires to be where you are right now? What what is a tip or advice that 
Um, since Billy has already covered um, the advice for those who like to apply for the program, mm-hmm. uh, for those that are coming in the exchange program, my advice would be that they should be open-minded and ready to learn. Because when you're in a new country, new context, and a new work environment, there's a lot of learning and unlearning that has to happen. And if you're close-minded, you might not enjoy it as much as you ought to. So my advice would be that people ought to be open-minded and willing to learn. I, I like that. I especially like the part where you said you have to be willing to learn and unlearn. And yeah, I think when you come into a new place, sometimes you come with your own ideas and how you want to do things. But it's good to be open, right? Okay, so based on the experiences that you've had with this exchange program, would you say it's influenced your future plans or your career aspirations? And if yes, what are your career or future plans? And how does this experience contribute to that? So, um, yes, my, my experiences are during the, this exchange program is uh, significantly influenced my future plans and my career aspirations. Uh, this program has um, expanded my understanding of youth empowerment and, uh, of course, sustainable development. So I plan to leverage my new skills and insights, of course, some of the skills that I've learned from you, um, uh, to probably enhance my media advocacy work that is back in Zimbabwe and uh, back in my hometown, Kariba. So I aim to initiate and support uh, projects that empower young people and ensure that their voices are heard in development and um, uh, disclosure. So ultimately, I inspire to lead uh, a media organization that is dedicated, like purely dedicated, to youth empowerment and sustainable development. Uh, that is uh, through uh, media advocacy. Of course, using the knowledge and experience that I've gained from this um, exchange uh, uh, program, that is to drive positive change in my community and beyond. So, yeah, um, this exchange program has really impacted uh, the way I view things and also my, my professional side. Answer was so cohesive, I have nothing to add to that. I will just pass the mic to you. So, how has your current experience at Youth Alive Kenya influenced your future plans or career aspirations? And if yes, what are your career or future plans and how does this experience contribute to that? Um, my experience has really affected my, has really inspired <laughs> <laughs> my future plans because. When you engage with youth in Kenya, they are well vested knowledge on what's going, what's going around, what's happening, and how their systems work. And that made me look back to my country and just assess how engaged the youth are. And they're not as engaged as they ought to be. So, my future plans is that I work towards inspiring youth to participate in decision-making processes and that should be done by first letting them know how these institutions work, where they come in and all that. So um, after our exchange period we are supposed to do some follow-up work and one of the ideas I have, (laughs) because I haven't actually written it down, but one of the ideas I have is to have a policy festival where youth engage with policies and maybe inst- and maybe institutions or laws that affect them, but then in a very youth friendly manner, not like those low yeah, messages and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So are you going to, am I invited for that? And if so, are you flying me out to Malawi? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I would definitely, we might, I might not be Malawi, but I'm definitely beside this. I'm on the sidelines clapping for you and cheering you on. And you can obviously always ask for support from this end. I think everyone has made that very warm and open. So, Yeo and Billy, thank you so much for making time to have a sit down with me and allowing me to probe your mind and ask all these questions. I know it's been, it's taken quite some time, but um, we are going to be having fun right after this, so that makes that count. 
However, before we end, I'd like to know, is there any slang you've learned from Kenya, any words that, you know, you would like to share with us or when you go home, you're going to tell stories and say, oh, there's this slang, they use this name. Is there any Kenyan slang you've learned? Oh, like an exclamation. Mm-hmm. When Kenyans say, guy. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> At first it was confusing, but I got a hang of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we tend to say guy a lot. Although, guy is actually from a particular tribe, but it's used by almost everyone. Just a fact to take back. It's from a particular tribe, but everyone uses it. So, yeah, I can see how that can be confusing. <laughs> I thought it was the English guy, like GUI. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like guy, like person. Yeah. Oh no, it's it's actually guy, guy, but we say guy. Anyway, let me not add to your confusion. On to you. <laughs> really? Really? Okay, then I'm going to ask you to say the this this word you use in the office when everything is fine, like there's a lot going on and we have timelines and deadlines and you tell me there's a way you say it in Zimbabwe. I, I mean I say it don't I say don't worry but there's a way you say it that I just yeah. So it's don't worry. Don't worry. It's actually means you could you know to chew everything down eh, to calm the environment. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Yes. So yeah. that that would be my takeaway. Well, thank you so much, guys, for having a sit down with me. I have been your host slash interviewer, Sheba Makori, but I would also want to recognize our silent partner who's been here, our communication specialist, Frederick Otino, who has been manning the decks and the sound. So just an appreciation to him. Uh-huh. And also want to thank Billy for being in studio. I've definitely enjoyed working with you closely. And I have, I think I've been constantly said it was, are you sure you want to go back to Zimbabwe? You could have, you know, you could stay here. And also, Yeo, I think you made an impact. We didn't work in the same department, but everyone who's worked with you has constantly said, wow, this lady really puts in the work. She's intelligent. She's smart. So I will still put the offer out there. You guys can stay back. You know, we could apply and yes. So before we close the show, I'll let our lovely guests say goodbye. Oh, thank you, Shepa. Uh, you know, it's been... Um actually a very great time that we had here in Kenya and specifically here at Youth Alive. You guys made our stay so nice and great. We had uh, great times, you know, we learned a lot. We had fun times and I know today we are even going to have more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so being a part of uh, Youth Alive Kenya just gave me like, you know, a better understanding of uh, the organization system, project management, you know, the importance of our community de- uh, driven initiatives and the exposure to new systems, softwares. And uh, it also enhanced my technical skills, making me a better equipped um, a media personnel. So it's actually been uh, productive and yeah, I gained a lot from this exchange. So thank you very much to the Youth Alive team. And uh, thank you very much also. A big appreciation to, to the Norek uh, team for giving us uh, these opportunities. And yeah, it's been really great. 